making a very original breakfast this morning. Bacon, eggs, a bit of toast. We can't really fit a toaster on the stove because the hot plate takes up the whole space, so we just buttered the bread and chucked it straight in the hot plate. Winner every time. Maximum health, of course. Mm. And uh, of course, to wash it all down, got a nice coffee here. Triple pod this morning because we have a big day of adventuring ahead. Heading up to the Cape. Never seen an echidna in real life. That's so cool. He's so cute. He like came up to me, like stopped me, like, you want you want and fight? then he kept going. He's off into the bush. Oh, that's so cool. Look at his little tracks. I've literally never seen an echidna before. Where are you going, buddy? I'm shop. God, I think he's playing bush. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Oh. They're actually really pretty. Yeah. We just saw an echidna. Uh -huh. It was so cute. I've never seen an echidna in real life. I've only seen them like in pictures. I literally have never seen one, not even in a zoo or something. Yeah, you've um, probably seen one in a zoo, but never in the wild. Anyway, so I've decided that that is going to be this trip. socks. Is <laughs> Daniel now needs to find me some socks of echidna. So yeah, Karajini was the dingo. Now, uh, this part of the world, Shark Bay region, yep. is an echidna. An echidna. Mm. So uh, I've also Whoa, just decided so I want a stubby holder with an echidna on it. We don't need any more stubby holders. It says something about like... Hey, how about this? Parent, you just get yourself parent, a nice sticker. Cape parent or something. A nice sticker. No. Um, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's, let's uh, install a one-in-one-out policy for stubby no. holders. So... <laughs> it's a one-in policy <laughs> at all times. <laughs> we just keep gaining them. Because one day when we're old and we have grandkids and they'll be like using a stubby holder. We'll die and be like, here. Yeah, and I'll be like, we holders. got that when we were up in the... And then we'll be able to tell them the story because that's what my grandparents used to do for me. So stubby holders actually do have a special place in my heart. It's the 21st century spoon collection. We're on the road now. We left our point from South Gregory's and mm -hmm. we're headed to Cape Perrin. Yep, on the way we're going to be checking out Bottle Bay, which is another oh, potential yeah. campsite for future trips and also just a nice place to spend a bit of time and check out while we're in this area. Apparently it's very soft sand when we get up to uh, get around to the eastern side of the peninsula. So yeah, so moment, our tires are max bumps. Our tires are mostly on 15 psi, except for the mostly. pesky back right, which is the one that seems to always uh, let itself down on these tracks. It's down to 12 psi, unless I've got a really slow leak. Uh, possibly, but anyway, that's down to 12, so a little bit of extra traction, which is always welcome. Uh, and now, yeah, we're making our way up north now. These are a bit smaller, so the bays at Bottle Bay are a bit smaller. But still plenty big enough, and there's more of them. Yeah. So, so far I think we've passed four, this is five, there's another six one there, and only two so far still have been Still in the years. first loop. Yeah. But it seems like if you're maybe getting in camp late in the day, mm. Bottle Bay is a place to go, uh, because you're more likely to get a spot.
So this is Bottle Bay. We're currently walking along the beach, one of the nicest stretches yeah, of beaches we've ever on. seen. Yeah, it's quite a bright day. I'll try and squint through it. This area is like one of the main reasons I've always wanted to come to this, uh, this national park, because you get this nice transition from the red dirt over there to the beautiful white sandy beaches to some of the bluest water I've ever seen. So that exact uh, three color gradient is what I've always wanted to see. And so that's kind of one of the reasons we're here and loving it. Yeah, Pretty it's nice, beautiful. Eh? Yeah, sorry, I'm just enjoying it and taking in the scenes. We're leaving the first uh, track of footprints on this particular stretch of beach for yep. at least the day. There are uh, a few people behind us, I think, but um, everyone's kind of, so there's some people snorkeling out there, which I thought they were really keen because um, it's freezing in the ocean and apparently lots of sharks around here. So, so the place we're going next, which is literally just around the corner, five or six k's up the road, is uh, the, the tip uh, Point Perrin and also Skipjack Point. So there's a lot of sharks that you can see from those two points, like some of the most densely populated shark infested waters in Western Australia. So you gotta be pretty keen to go for a swim here, but they are with a tour bus, so they must know stuff that we don't and this, these waters must be okay. And oh, it's such a calm day today. Yeah, it's beautiful. The wind has died off. It is a little, like there's still breeze, but it's really lovely. It's, and it's warm, um, but not hot. I don't know, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Look at these little rocks. I was just saying to Daniel, you can seem to, it looks like you can drive on this beach, like there's tire tracks, but the tide must be in at the moment and you can't get past the rocks without going in the ocean. Yeah. But I was saying to Daniel, I was like, how salty do you want to get the D-Max? Because <laughs> man, the footage of driving on this beach would just be phenomenal, so. We'll see. Um, maybe the tide's on its way out. We might get lucky. Yeah, might be able to get go. it before we leave. So we're currently at Cape Perrin, the most northerly point of this national park. And we're gonna drive around to Skipjack Point, which is the next kind of lookout around the corner. But Bianca noticed there was actually a walking trail that goes between the two, 1.5 Ks. 1.5 Ks one way, so three Ks all around. Yeah. Although looking at it, it looks like it's just there. So that's what we're trying to do now, but we're not sure if the beach is part of the trail or if we should be we're back be up, up there. where there's people walking <laughs> past right hungry. now. Yes. <laughs> is going to read out this very informative sign to us. Complete surveys of the region, the reappearance of the strange people made the Malgana anxious. Why were they here? What did they want? A Malgana elder joined in dancing in such a 
grotesque manner reported Harago that we were ready to die with laugh, laughing. I don't know guys, I reckon she's making it all up. <laughs> I was reading what's left of Look at writing. this. There is nothing there. In this area, the Malagan people, oh, you're in the, you can't see it, you've got to be here. There is nothing there. It's a story, it's a Bianca dream time story. Ah, see, I can show you the writing. See, the Malagana people of Walubu Peron, something or other, encountered men, members of French something or other. Yeah, see, you can see it. So we have made our way down to Skipjack Point or up to Skipjack Point. I'm not sure which one of those uh, really makes more sense. Uh, so this place is really renowned for its abundance of marine life. Everything from dolphins to sharks, turtles, a bit of everything really. Plenty of fish. And I suppose, supposedly you can see it all from this viewing deck. So there's some nice little boardwalks and viewing platforms out this way. I haven't seen anything yet, but it is really windy. So the, the water's a bit churned up and whatnot. But it's also very cold because of that wind and yeah, but it's a beautiful view and amazing yeah. just like ocean forever today. Yeah, yeah, unreal view. So we might just hang up here for a while and see how many of these different types of marine life we can actually see from this lookout. As Bianca mentioned, I haven't seen any yet, but I guess we'll just uh, give it a few minutes and yeah. see what we can see. Hell of a view though, even Very without nice. marine life, hell of a view. So we've just finished checking out Skipjack Point and Cape Perrin, both amazing places to see, unbelievable views. Didn't get to see too much marine life at Skipjack Point, unfortunately the weather's just not conducive to that. Uh, pretty windy and the, the water was kind of churned up a little bit as a result of that. I'm going to be a bit of a party pooper and say that I didn't like them as much as the other places we've been to. Um, no? No. Uh, Skipjack Point, I didn't really love, but that's because it was really windy and it was cold and you couldn't see any marine life because it was too choppy. Um, the other place that I've already forgot the name of, Perrin, Cape, Cape Perrin, Perrin. was um, that was nice, but again, it's not as nice as some of the like Bottle Bay, I thought it was nicer, and Gregory's and you yeah, just all don't get that high there. vantage viewpoint from those campsites no, as well as you do from there. Yeah, and I guess if there was marine life active at that time, it'd probably be a bit more yeah, normal, maybe. but yeah, each their own for sure. So we are now, it's what, 2.45 in the afternoon, we're making our way towards camp to try and secure a place, because uh, as with the rest of the places, it's first come, first served. So we are making our way to Herald Bight, which is the place we've uh, been told is quite boggy to get into. Hence Bianca's driving to get us bogged, or well, hopefully not. No, I'm just here for the bumps. Uh, <laughs> and another reason you want to get there while it's still kind of relatively early on in the afternoon is... <gasps> Sorry, you're going, you're going. I'm just um, going to Is because if we get there and it's too windy to be a nice place to camp for the night, we will double back and come back across all these bumps to stay at either Bottle Bay or one of the two Gregory's campsites. Uh, but time will tell which way we uh, decide to go, but for now, bumping our way towards uh, Herald Bight.
we're currently cruising down uh, the beach on Herald Bight, is that right? Yep, Herald Bight. Um, half the beach is pretty well compacted. The other half that we're driving on at the moment is soft. Ooh. I would actually consider it one of the more solid beaches we've driven on. Yeah, definitely. We've, we've driven on way worse um, down south. Uh, and... So we're just deciding whether or not to stay here tonight, because obviously that's why we came here. There's campsites I available stay on at, one track. Uh, at this place, Herald Bight. It's kind of just find your own plot oh, of God, sand on the beach. We're not there getting involved. <laughs> I'm still learning and it really annoys me because we get in a rut. How do you stop it doing the side just to side let thing? let it follow the rut. So I'm trying and then we just drop off of it. Look, ready? See, look, you, where, where do you want to go, DMX? Everywhere. F everywhere. Look, now we're getting bogged. You're not getting bogged. Yeah. Don't listen to me, Anka. You're totally fine <laughs> to come here. Very solid beach. Put your oh, no, no, down the, the beach fine. is fine. I'm just not a good driver at this. Anyway, um, I don't want to stay here because I, I don't know, I just don't like it. Out of all the places we've looked at, this is like kind of really yeah average. okay it's a very nice place it's not quite as nice as the campsites on the other side of the peninsula i quite like it i'd happily stay here bianca's not as keen and to be honest they're all good options to me so if bianca wants to I head back to the other campsite to, that's fine i want to go back to bottle bay and stay there because i really want to see that beach at sunset anyway good problem to have a lot of good options to stay this place is good bottle bay is good back at the gregory sites they're also good and we're still booked in at monkey Mire if all of that fails oh yeah so Pretty happy. Yeah, how about that, hey? I am choosing to, I'm opting to have one more night in the rough rather than going to stay at a caravan park where there is showers and amenities and all the good things in life. I'm yeah. gonna murder those things. So, is that decision made? Heading back off the beach? Yeah, I think we're gonna head back off of this beach, which as you can tell, it's so very soft and that's why we've got so many bumps. Um, yeah, head back to where we came from. All right, sounds good, let's do it. Let this be a lesson to always listen to your partner when they suggest you go and uh, camp somewhere else because this is an amazing afternoon in Bottle yeah. Bay. Just got some awesome footage uh, on that little section of uh, beach that was Red Cliff that we wanted to earlier today at sunset, which is what I was really hoping to do. Um, like I thought it'd be really cool to do, so it was nice to come back here and actually get to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now about to watch a pretty amazing sunset. There's little to no wind again. Touch, touch, uh, touch wood. Uh, so yeah, we're just deciding whether to stay down here and watch the sunset and then go up and try and find a campsite at the risk of like them all being taken or go up there now, set up camp and then wander back down to the beach. Yeah, and, and you know, set up camp in the daylight. My vote's probably to set up in the daylight and then we can just wander down to the beach or mosey around around camp depending on what we want to do, so. Yeah, but what a spot, hey? Bottle yeah. Bay, put Although, it on your list. Feeling a bit sunburnt. I've definitely gotten a bit of windburn <laughs> today and sunburn. I did yeah. put sunscreen on, but I should have reapplied, so I'm a bit hot. So it's starting to cool down as well. Um, I think we might be in for another cool night, but yeah, we've been pretty warm in the tent, thankfully, except for that one night at, yeah. uh, at the big lagoon. That was pretty cold. But yeah. All right, well, we're pretty gonna... hungry. Didn't, we kind of skipped lunch today, we so we're both starving. Time. We were filming, 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 filming. So, yeah. 
There you go. All right. Well, let's go and enjoy the sunset. We'll figure out where we go. Sounds good. We are sorry. I should do that. We um, <laughs> we have uh, just gotten back to camp and set up. Uh, we ended up opting to stay on the beach and watch the sunset, which was yeah, just phenomenal. An and unbelievable sunset. Like, I tried not to get more footage and ended up getting more footage. <laughs> we sat down and I was like, just sit down, Bianca. I set her chair up and I was like, let's just sit down and enjoy it. Most and of the time, know it, is just like I'm just sitting there, like by myself with an empty chair <laughs> next to me. <laughs> and I was running around chasing birds and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, it was spectacular. The colors are just amazing. Like mm -hmm. the the sunsets up north, we've said it so many times. They just hit different, and the colors themselves are different. I'm just needing to adjust my water here. Oh, I just turned it up. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. All good. Pull all the water away. Okay. Random side note, we've been using this jet ball thing so much on this trip. It's one of those things like, um, yeah, like before we got it, I was like, oh, we don't really need oh, anything yep. extra to um, to cook with because we have this hot plate. But the thing is, I've got this full barbecue plate on this stove at all times and I can take it off to put a kettle, but I just find like this is so handy. We can just cook up on this big plate, boil water there when we need to, and it boils water so fast. Not a mm. plug, just something we've genuinely been yeah, we've, really uh, using a lot this we trip. Were, we were shocked at how much, like we didn't think that we'd get a lot of use out of this. I think we got it, it was part of the anaconda thing package yeah. that Dana was doing, so we got to keep it. And um, yeah. honestly, yeah, it's really great. And I've taken on a few hiking um, camps with uh, that I've been on, and it's just so nice and light. So yeah, so like, can't really and for them. the dishes, it's perfect. We just like boil a liter in that, chuck it in the sink, do the mm. dishes. Uh, yep. Absolute winner. Anyway, that's enough plugging for that piece of Yeah, so <laughs> we're just cooking, cooking some dinner. Um, yes. Daniel's got some lovely satay chicken kebabs. Bianca bought me some satay kebabs from Denim when we rolled through there a couple I of days ago, which I've been can't wait to get so into. So we've got those, and I've got some plain pasta, which is just salt and pepper and margarine, which will sound gross to most of you, but to me that's actually a pretty good meal. The just only thing missing is some cheese. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's gluten-free pasta. Right. That was me that time. Um, <laughs> anyway. So yeah, we're gonna cook up dinner. We're gonna get all that footage off of the cameras and put it onto the hard drive. Yeah, so that's kind of the job at the end of every night. It's like extracting all the footage from all different cameras. It takes I've... a long time. So I mean, because yeah. we capture how many gig of data? Well over a hundred gig every day of mm. um, footage, and that's without the drone. Idea. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly with the drone. It's yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. we'll do that. We'll probably check out some of the footage. We're really proud of some of the shots we got today. So yeah. hopefully they turn out just as good as what we hope they did. I'm sure they did. Um, um, start editing a few photos if we're really keen and then get into bed for tomorrow. Comes our adventure to Monkey Maya, which I'm super keen for. I am not keen to go over all those bumps again. The amount of driving in and out we did today. Oh, anyway. <laughs> they're good fun, but yeah. it's just like... Yeah. Anyway, I'm hungry. I'm going to get this dinner cooked. And oh, then... yeah. I get for it. Technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. Hey, good job. All right, I'm gonna start cooking because I am hungry. Mm. Anyway, catch you guys in the next one. See you tomorrow. Catch you on the flip side. Motherfucker. Ooh, Lovely man just asked if I was all good. I think he thought that maybe we had an argument and he just dumped me on the side of the road. Oh, yeah. I don't think I can. Did you just stall? Yes. Why? Nothing to see here. 
second gear, but you're in fourth. No, I was in second gear, but I just went too slow for even second. Oh, I didn't no, I didn't so it. it. must be a mechanical fault. Let's uh, pop the bonnet and suss it out. Oh, there's the problem, Bianca. I fixed it. All good. To get that uh, lovely awesome bit of footage that I just got for Daniel. I have had to scale a cliff, literally. It's quite tedious walking along this because there's nothing to stop me and this sand, very, very slippery. So uh, I'm sticking to the goat tracks and sticking to the bushes because, yeah, one slip and I'm uh, off a cliff. The problem with bringing such a good camera like the Sony along is that we're supposed to be sitting and relaxing and enjoying the sunset, but you just see these shots and you're like, I have to get them. A boardwalk's so good you'll want to do it twice. <laughs> 